And it was this was a travel show. So it. I finished the thing and I came up and I was like, oh my guys, that was the dog's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and it made it into the show. And then you're like, let me look at my fanny pack and no, grab I, something out of there. <laughs> Welcome to episode eight of Shuttle Pod Show. Today we have very special guest Anthony Montgomery, who plays Ensign Travis Mayweather on Enterprise. We'll be answering some more of your fan questions. And now for our hosts, Connor Trenier and Dominic Keating. Erica, how are you? Great. How are you? Hi, good. Erica. Good. Good to see you guys. Nice to see you again, my dear. Nice to be back in the chair. Yeah, I like it. I love your house, but this is also nice. Well, thank we did. We I like nice, your house more. We had a nice time at your house. <laughs> We did, and, and the stuff was there for um, a week longer. It's still there, isn't it? Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, it is an honor to have with us today uh, a friend, a compatriot, a co-worker, uh, a man who never seems to stop working and gets better and better looking. It is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, you look over and you're like, God damn it. Honestly, you look like a different man. I've been watching the show as I've been said a few times, and you look like a totally different dude now. I mean, it's, uh, I know we've all aged a bit, but you in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God bless our dear friend, our brother, Anthony Montgomery. Hello, mate. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. I love you both. All right. Let's, yeah. uh, let's make it memorable. Yes, <laughs> we will. Uh, so uh, right, right off the bat, mate, uh, I know you just got off the cruise with Connor. Uh, yes. You had a good time? We had a blast. I've, we did. Um, I've only done one cruise before, before this one, and it was not a Trek cruise. It was just a cruise that had a group of Trek people on it, maybe two, three hundred people. Who was that one? I don't know. I did it with Garrett. Garrett oh, Wong. Wow. I don't remember what it was, but we had a blast. Was uh, that after we closed or while we were doing the show? Or? Don't get me lying. Where did you go? I, I literally <laughs> don't remember. I don't know. We went to, uh, and I don't even remember where we went. I We went to some. You don't remember where you went? Some places in Mexico. It must have been the Caribbean. No, no, no. Because I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. No, I don't. I really don't remember, but it was a lot of fun. Have fun. Um, but this was an entire ship that mm -hmm. was dedicated to Star Trek. That was... How many souls are on board, as they uh, 30, say? More than 3,500? Really? Wow. And then they had also uh, an entire floor devoted to people if, you know, you got the COVID. Yeah. So there were empty rooms in case there was a, uh, an outbreak. God. I and I, did, I never I, heard I, of I it. I could have been a seat filler. Oh, absolutely. I really oh, absolutely. could have. It's, it's, oh, uh, for sure. I'm putting a, uh, some sort of memo in for next one. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, where did you all go? You went to, the, you went to Cancun? Or we went to Nassau. Nassau. We went to St. Thomas, Thomas and St. Martin. That's right. Fantastic. Did you get off the boat at all to visit any of those places? I did in Nassau and I did in St. Thomas, but by the time we got to St. Martin, I was already drunk over. I was just, <laughs> so I rested on that one, the St. Martin. I just rested that day. Good time had by all, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. very much so. It, it was also kind of strange to, you'd walk around and on these massive screens, you'd look up and, oh, that, there's me. <laughs> yes, yes, that was... Uh, <laughs> you know, they, they played the episodes... Constantly. I have that yes. at home now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Is, uh, my career constantly flashing up on various <laughs> screens around the house. <laughs> oh, there I am. I live alone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a lot of fun. What have you been up to otherwise, uh, other than the cruise? I know you've got a, you've got a recurring role on uh, the family business. The on family BET, business, you? based on the New York Times bestselling novel of the same name by Carl Weber. They are in their fourth season. I've been with them since their second. I've got a major recurring. I play Brother Elijah, a member of a fictitious Muslim brotherhood, right. and... That's been a lot of fun because I've never been able to play a character like that be, before. That's a good part, yeah. It's been a lot of fun. How on the nose do they get with that character then about the, uh, I mean, because it's quite a sort of touchstone, you know, issue now, that the whole you know, Muslim brotherhood. Yes. And, uh, I've, um, I did my research right? and they let me play and I would go in and just keep myself as grounded in the reality of what I learned about the Muslim faith and Islam, <clears throat> it was um, 
it's been it's been fun. They have one of the actors who is on it. I guess he was a practicing Muslim at one point, so he's given me a couple of okay. couple of uh, pieces of advice on some different things. But for the most part, they just let me come in and do what it is that I do. I don't stray too far from what I feel like the core of their belief is. Mm -hmm. Even though my character went to prison and he's gone through a lot of stuff. I still just keep him rooted in what I read and what I learned about it. And then I just keep it there. Nobody is, nobody has come at me so far. So God. In the you know. telling of that character, how does he get into the, the faith and how is he, is he turned in prison or is he? Yes, he was, um, like well, that? he was a, <clears throat> a regular kid who went to FAMU University and he had just found out that he got his acceptance letter and was on his way home from school one day and there was a drug raid at the corner store and all of the dope boys ran out and he didn't run because he, he didn't he right. didn't sell drugs he had never done drugs didn't think there was an issue had no issue right. and he ended up getting busted and doing three years and At what sort of age he i mean high school from high school to college so right. he That's you know backstory. 17 18 yeah right, mm -hmm. right. yeah that was his backstory does it, does it show you practicing uh the religion at all on the show? um just a couple of things they don't they the show is not really about that it's right. not really about my character so you see a couple of things maybe at the beginning of a scene or at the end of a scene but for the most part he is just another part of what the machine is that moves that story forward. No, I know you. I tell you why you've been on my mind a bit since somewhere in the pandemic. I started saying a gratitude prayer before I ate. I, I, and I always remember you. Mm. Whenever we'd sit down anywhere at dinner out or just having lunch in the trailer, you would always take that moment. Uh, you know, you 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 had a, you have faith, don't you? Yes, and, uh, absolutely. It's, it's an it's an integral part of your life. Yes. Was that in the telling of this character? Did, did you harken back to that, or did you just looking at this as an acting job? And you know, it's a totally different kettle of fish. I mean, much it is definitely completely different than how I was raised. I was raised Baptist in the Midwest in Indiana, so the Baptist face is just faith. about the opposite. It, absolutely. Um, but just having that core of faith i had i knew for him to make it through prison once he realized that that's what it was going to be then he had to hold on to that and for a lot of the ugliness that i've had to overcome in my own life if i didn't if i was not grounded in knowing that god was first in my life i know i would not have survived right yeah. at and the end of the day i've been through and you guys will learn we'll get to it later on but eventually when my memoir comes out people will see i've i've been through the ringer that's they, right. they know travis but they don't know me and the, you've, you have written the memoir haven't you i mean this I, have. Is, I mean this is not news to us but uh, no but you guys news have to some people absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. during the it's finished it's done it is done it is with the editor right now it was one hundred thousand five hundred and eighty nine <laughs> words are you sure when i finished no i am because because my attorney said you have to get it between seven and eight thousand or they're not even going to pay attention to it because he's going to get it to simon and schuster when how many it's done. pages is that in 200 than 91. That's a good, that's a good wow. read. And, uh, and you wrote, you started this because I mean, I was t in the preamble to you coming this morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was saying to Connie that, I, you know, I watched Tiger King <laughs> 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 and a bunch of other SH1T. <laughs> And God bless you, man. I, I have to say you are utterly fantastic in your tirelessness. I mean, Absolutely. this guy could climb Everest in the EV suit. I you know. I absolutely, I actually could. <laughs> yes, You're funny you in really that, but I, and it's just because we have to. It, we have to. We know if people went into the pandemic one way and you came out of the pandemic the same way, then you should really re-examine your existence yeah, yeah, because yeah. nobody should be the same after the pandemic. And I realized that I'm so much more than just an actor. And during the pandemic, it let me realize, do I want to set my phone up and do what other people are doing? I do something over here and then I call you and Connor, you set yours up and then we pretend to act with each other or I do something that I can actually give of myself 
that I feel will help this world. And with some of the stuff that I've overcome in my life, I do believe when this memoir comes out, it's going to it's going to make a difference in some people's lives. Were you right. scared to to write it, to start it? I mean, I, yes. I, I would be terrified. The idea yes. that you're laying yourself bare, you're, you're being yes. fully honest about uh, your experience. And, you know, this is for people to take in about and take you apart and take apart yes. and judge and what have you. I would have been, How, I would have uh, gotten to, I was, and that was it. <laughs> do you know, do you, I, I did. Do I, you know the first line ish of the book? Yeah. How does, do you know? I mean, that would be, uh, did you, that's literally, I I, down. well, where does, what is the first line? We are, they are working to give me a different first line. Oh. But what I started with, my editor said, no, I want you to have a line that's going to bring people in. I was like, what are you talking about, man? In the beginning. It's a fucking, <laughs> and, yeah, one of those. So, I mean, I just literally started with, I resisted the idea to your question. Mm -hmm. I resisted the idea of writing this book in part because revisiting some of the painful parts of my past is a terrifying idea. Yeah. And I literally, I there were times where I'd be writing and I'd just have tears flowing mm -hmm. and didn't even realize it. So it was cathartic in many different ways, but it was also really exhausting. This book, I started this one after Enterprise ended and I've been working on it. I just finished it Oh, I don't, wasn't three aware weeks of that. ago. Okay, like I wasn't I, aware that you started I'd so start, far back. I'd start and Put then I'd away. stop. And right. I'd start and I'd stop. And then I'd go, okay, nobody cares about my life like that. Let me, I'll get to this eventually. And then as I keep it's moving funny on. That, it's funny how this thing here. Gets in the way. Oof. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was I've pointing at my head for those only listening. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten in the way of myself for many years. And then I oh. realized I've also overcome things in my life that most people will never see. Mm -hmm. Many people that are from my street in Indiana, mm -hmm. they're either in jail or dead, right. living lives that they're just existing until they die. I've been around the world numerous times. I did not even realize I was going to make it out of Indiana. So I have a story that I feel like is going to resonate whenever it does. Take me back then. I was going to say, how, I was one, one question I don't think I've ever asked you. How old were you when you said, I think I want to be an actor? Uh, 19. 19. You will learn about this again. So, and, I, I was um, 20. I was in college. Did it, you do yeah. any, no schooling, no school uh, theater stuff, no plays Beforehand, at school? No. We did Our Town. I think everybody had yeah. to read Our yeah. Town. In English class. In English class. Yeah. Everybody had to read it. That I would had, have been, what, 15, 14, 15? Uh, mm -hmm. Like, no. no senior year. Yeah, yeah. Me. It was like, I, I feel like it was junior, sophomore, junior, senior year, somewhere in right. there where they just gave you a part. I never planned on being an actor. I just went to college because I was going to end up dead or in jail and I knew I needed to do something with my life. Mm -hmm. I had a, I was a new dad and- That's right, you had a, you, I had my, we, we met Megan uh, as you got Austin. Star Trek and mm -hmm. she was back in your life at that time. She's a young, grown, She's a successful young lady now. She's she? fantastic. Yeah. But oh, back less. then it was Hi, me <laughs> trying to figure it out. Hey, Meg, I love you. Yeah. It was me trying to figure out what I was going to do and her being out of my life. Um, yeah, there have been some years, haven't there, when you finally got to set and, you know, suddenly your world had turned and you everything could invite changes. her back in. Yeah. Yes. And there have been some years. You were 18 when you had? 19. 19, 19 when she was born. And yes. did not know what I was going to do with myself. And even though she was out of my life, I knew that I wanted her to be proud of her dad, even if she didn't know me. Right. So I said, go to college and you'll figure it out. I Back then, I don't know if you guys remember, but they used to have those billboards that would say, uh, knowledge is the key, knowledge is the key. I would see those all over the place. And something got in me that said, all right, well, if knowledge yeah. is the key, then go to school and figure out what lock that opens up. And I tell the story of me auditioning for my first play. I got it and we toured around, this is the truncated version. We toured mm. around Indiana for three months. During that run, I declared my major in theater. 
I didn't declare a minor. Everybody thought I was crazy. What are you going to do to survive? What are yeah, you going to do to eat? You certainly picked job security. Yeah, I know. I, I had no idea. I was idealistic back then. Yeah. The, the grown version of me was like, what are you doing, man? But no, I'm- uh, It takes that kind of, I mean, balls to the wall. To do what stupidity. we do. To put all yes. those eggs it, in one basket really and, yes. and carry that around. To do that. But yeah. here's the beauty. I can say of- all the people in the world, I am one of those few who I'm a working actor. Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. what my actual job yeah. is. Yeah. Even though we don't work all the time, even though you're still, we still jump through it. I, I'm doing what I came out to Hollywood to yeah. do. And still that in itself, it. are yeah. you kidding me? That's Not a only blessing. That, I mean, drink to yeah. that. I don't Cheers. even usually drink, but uh, this uh, is, that's worth we'll drinking drink to too. that. Okay. Absolutely. Let's drink to that. Two seconds, ladies and gentlemen. You know, on, on that Ooh, note. sweetness. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, folks. Uh, Anthony's not a drinker, especially not whiskey. <laughs> but I do it with my brothers. Good Lord. You know, and, and you've uh, done so many different things. I mean, you, miles away, you know, you yes. were doing while we were on Enterprise. Yes. And, um, you know, <laughs> and it's you, you, done. You, it's done. You've been carrying that on for that's whole this whole time and for the fans that don't know miles yes. away is my graphic novel that was optioned by a company called lion forge <clears throat> and i just got off a conversation with them last week they are in talks with an animation house for it to be turned into an animated series. Oh, Mazel tov, man. And so, as I remember, we're all signed up to play the Oh, parts. absolutely. That's Don't right. worry about that. Well, I haven't like, forgotten that. Hey, the, the hardest part is getting somebody to write the damn check. I would have gotten you guys working a long time ago. No, they're really, they're excited about it. And it's one of those, they wrote the check three years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a five-year option, a five-year deal. They had three years to do a deal. So I called them last week and said, okay, your option is up. Cause it's over. All right. Yeah. And they said, well, would you be okay to extend it? Because we're in talks with a company who loves it. And miles away is their favorite one. They what? have three projects. And I said, all right, well let's look um, at this point. This isn't about friendship. This is about business. So show me the money. I'm yeah, sorry. Right. Uh, that's where we are now. So if you guys want to do that, absolutely. We can extend it right. for the right price. Exactly. I, I remember reading miles away to Jasper when he was a kid and uh, he carried that thing and read it when he could learn when he learned how to read, and oh, he absolutely loved it. It's good, fan it's fantastic. We're doing more. We're going to do more. They just didn't want me to because they wanted to do a different round of books. Mm. So mine, we set the Miles Away universe for the series before my book, and that way we can go to the book and then do an entire diff entirely different series so afterwards. Can spin it out as right. it were. Absolutely. Right. Right. I I've been watching over the years the Gene Roddenberry's, the George Lucas's, the James Cameron, mm. all of the people who create these things that are bigger than they thought they could be. We know how big they could be because the three of us are pewter statues. How do I know? Because yeah. I've seen them. Right. Yeah. We're right. all of the things that those guys didn't even realize about. So in creating mine, I said, whatever we do as an actor, I don't know animation. I don't know how to draw. I can't even draw stick figures. But I've been telling stories for 25 years. So right. I brought that. We have a solid story in Miles Away. Right. We have a solid story that... I know will translate into us being things. And but a young man that has daydreams about being a superhero, right? Is uh, no, it's a. It's actually about a boy. Well, the book, what you were talking about was in the book, but we had to go to a different place for the series. So we went beforehand. All right. And it's a 10-year-old boy and his parents are the only humans on an all-alien planet and the aliens on the world have superhuman abilities. So his father, who is a brilliant engineer, builds these mech suits for them to be able to survive in their environment. Right. His mother is a military might. Instead of the dad being the fighter, the mom is That's a fighter. A nice turn. Yeah. So, and Sonequa Martin-Green is going to be playing the mom. Right. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. Wow. I, solidified that when we were on the cruise. Just keep it in the family. Oh, everything. Always, always. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I know there are no series out there, and I watched somebody go create one before these guys get it out, <laughs> where there is a black family 
on an alien world that we know of. There have been none. Yeah. I've watched I've watched Netflix and Disney Plus and all of the things. It's not there. So I believe that that's why this animation house is so right. excited. It's unique. It really is. Okay. And we just, I mean, we did this. They've been holding on to this for two years since December 2019. They've had this. Right. Wow. And it's just taken time. As everybody knows, animation takes time. So I just said, all right, well, much like I told you about the project that you are doing, the the deal that you're waiting on, mm. when it goes, it's going to go. Yeah. So I just kind of like, all right, miles away is going to be there. We'll be fine. Yeah, you got to hurry up and wait. That's it. That's what this business is. Yeah. It really yeah. is. It always isn't it? is. Yeah. It is. It's like the army. <laughs> <laughs> boredom, 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 sheer terror. And then terror. <laughs> yes. Uh, I tell you what I was just thinking. I wanted you to tell the story. Uh, so prior to doing Enterprise with us, and we'll, we'll get to talk about uh, some of that stuff in a minute. Uh, there's a lovely story that just always makes me chuckle about you doing that kids um, travel show. Awesome Adventures. Yes. And you, uh, you were in London. <laughs> oh, Tommy! My you favorite, want me? To, my favorite. I don't, I don't think I know this. Story. It's oh, a great story. damn it! All right, um, it, and, it, and it's kind of live. <laughs> it, no, it's not kind of live. It, it is live. live. <laughs> it was absolutely live. So, the kids' adventure show is called Awesome Adventures, and I got it literally just before Enterprise. And they. And you've been halfway around the world, as it? Oh, were. I've been around yeah, the. Yeah. I've been around the world so many times. I went yeah. with the show initially. The first time I left the U.S., I went to Iceland and they had me running off mountains in Switzerland. I've gone um, climbing in a Costa Rican rainforest. I've been spelunking in London. I jumped off a bridge in London. Uh, I've swam in the South China Sea. Like they had me doing all kinds of things. I knew I was going to be safe because it was two kids, myself and two kids, one 12, 12 to 17 years old. That was the age range. So I knew whatever they had me do, it wasn't going to be any more difficult than for a child to do it. They're not, even if they were to kill me, they're not going to kill somebody's baby. Oh, we need another kid. So I'll be fine. <laughs> well, in England. <laughs> it's good TV. <laughs> so we're doing a... We're doing a bridge jump. I'd never been bungee jumping before. And... Was it over the Thames? Where was it? Was it? Uh, oh, don't get me lying. I don't was, know. Was, um, I have no idea. I just know it was high. And they said, hey, you want to go bungee jumping today? Hey, kids, you want to go bungee jumping? Sure. And I said, sure, let's do it. Scared shitless. I'm not even going to lie. I was like, oh, my God. OK, so if this rope breaks. All right, guys, we don't know where this is going. Right. So we do it. And I did not know. Dom only likes this because he knows what it actually means. The kids told me, yeah. if you if you like what you're doing, <laughs> he's, he's laughing already. You can say, "Oh, that's the dog's bollocks." <laughs> On live the TV, dogs, yeah. I didn't know. I was. I said, "Okay, sure." And it's, so, it's 1990. Uh, I got it in 90. Well, we you did could, this. We did this in 96. Right, 2001. 2001. So I did that in probably and 2000, maybe? You, still, Nin, you can 99. maybe get away with saying this on TV in England now, but 25 years oh, ago. 20 sure. I had no idea. And it was this was a travel show. So I finished the thing and I came up and I was like, oh my gosh, that was the dog's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and it made it into the show. And then you're like, let me look at my fanny I pack and grab I, something I, out of there. <laughs> Don saw it. He said, wait, Anthony, you can't say that. Uh, and I was like, well, it's there now. I didn't know what I was I saying. I just love the fact a bunch of London English, you know, like, no, mate, no, 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 no just no, say no, that. So I'm like, come on, guys. You don't tell me the it bad things. Totally oh, translate, mate. No, it's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Oh, my it's God. It's so, hilarious. That, I love it. That's so wrong. Uh, well, we, I believe, have some fan questions for you. Oh, we do? You. Yeah. Yes, that, we um, do. I um, have fans out there. I love you guys. <laughs> you have a lot of fans. Awesome. Well, they're mine, but I asked them to ask for some <laughs> questions. You know, that's nice of you. Thank you for lending me your people. Uh, so this fan question for you is uh, from Just Passing Through via Twitter. Would Travis become hardened after his experience with the Zindi, or would he have remained the optimistic, upbeat guy? Just passing through. That's a good question. <laughs> because I'm, I haven't gotten to the latter parts of the series, 
I was really youthful and really exuberant in the beginning of the show. Like you were. so much. I've been so. watching. I know. I, I've watched a few of them before I came in here. And wow, was I just like wide eyed and bushy tailed. And so I feel you like. You were young. How many old were you? You were 20. I was 30. Were you I first? just looked like you a looked baby. Like <laughs> yeah, I was a grown man. Are you kidding me? Um, I but, always thought you were only about 24, 25. No, it's because it was that was because that was your line in the show. <laughs> they uh, were Travis was only 20, Travis and Hoshi. They were t in your shuttle pod show. You guys talked about it. They were 25. True. That's true. Yeah. I know that because I just watched that last night. You two were brilliant. Oh, oh. Literally, you were brilliant in that. And I was so pissed. I was like, <laughs> I wanted an episode like that. Oh my God, that was well, so I good. I just watched Horizon. That and you were so terrific good. in that, mate. There's, there's a few scenes in Horizon between you and your brother and your mum. There's one scene with your mother. I literally got me going, man. Okay, all it's right. Beautiful. Well, I haven't oh. watched it again, but I watched yours and I was like, F it was so much fun watching you two, knowing you two, and then watching the show. I was like, oh, that's how they became like best friends <laughs> because this episode did it. Yeah, I got. We that. were blessed yeah. with that script. We absolutely, were. absolutely. It was, a, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a touchstone moment for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, answering the question. Yes, he would have been hardened because that changed everything. The Zindi and us going after everybody for our show, from what I'm remembering, that was our response to 9-11. Yep, yep. So he would definitely have changed. And had he been given more to do, I believe you guys would have seen me paint some different colors that you didn't get to see before. Mm. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. Yes is the answer. <laughs> awesome. The next one is from Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Uh, via Twitter. Do you think Travis and Hoshi would have had a relationship if the series had gone seven seasons? I don't know that they would have had a relationship, but I did talk to Manny Cotto, and he told me that they were going back to the Mirror Universe in season five if we had gone back, and she was going to be Empress Sato, and since that's I was her right, right hand, yeah, that's right. I absolutely, I don't know where it would have gone. If it had happened, Michelle, then possibly in the mirror universe. I don't know, because they only gave Travis one girlfriend on the whole show, and that was in the fourth season. <laughs> So oh I don't. And she turned out to be a bit of a snake. And that's she? what I mean. She, we yeah. had to arrest her. So yeah. I don't know. I uh, <laughs> big mole I got are the uh, the Denobulan girl that came on the ship in season two. I just saw that episode. Uh, oh, I didn't yeah. even. I never saw she you. She was an up. actress called Molly something. Hi, mole. I, she bumped into me in uh, Runyon Canyon some years back and recognized me. God bless her. But she went as big mole. She was a big girl, tall. I mean, you know, anyway. got tall, you. terribly tall. <laughs> Um, anywho, uh, yeah, so yes, I had heard that about uh, Manny's uh, plans for, for the movie. That would have been fun. Stuff. It would have been, wouldn't it? It's too bad we all didn't get to do those five, six, and seven seasons. It really is. Um, you know, we were talking about this the other day, just how the nature of TV was changing so dramatically at that. We didn't even know that the soup was, you know, changing that much at the time. Right. And that... Uh, you know, these shows now have cemented their existence um, and these franchises are kind of immovable now. And But at the time, it was not so. I mean, you know, there was no guarantees with... We looked like we were closing the franchise. Indeed. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I mean, you know, it looked like it was done. And um, and here we are. So, well done. Never everybody. to go that keeps away. on giving. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Hey, thank God bless yeah. Star Trek. Bless yeah. all and all of you fans. We've all got yes. different stories about, mm -hmm. you know, the audition process and, and all that. And yeah. I know that you were, were you still working on popular? Did it have just like that fine crossover line where you finished popular and then began enterprise? Yes, you did. I was very fortunate. Popular just ended and they were deciding about whether or not they were going to go into addition and an additional season. And I was told that if it came back for a new season, then I was going to be one of the series regulars on that show. And then I hear popular is canceled. I auditioned for the untitled Star Trek series and I got it. Right. So it was great because then I was also doing awesome adventures at the same time. And immediately upon getting that, 
I don't remember which producer, but one of them said, Anthony, you can't just be jumping out of planes and doing all the stuff you were doing before. Why not? And it was like, because for, you know, like insurance purposes, <laughs> we need you. you, we need you. It's a different kind of show. This is different. Yeah. So I, it, it was, it was a really great blessing and forgive me. I will talk about the story, but when you guys read it, it'll seem redundant. So I auditioned with Ron Surma, mm -hmm. who cast our show. I was doing awesome adventures. We were going up to San Francisco ish. And so for, initially it was just Ron. It was just Ron. It was just Ron. It that was, was just it. casting only, right? That was it. And then, and then they, they bring me back. And then it was Ron and the director. There may have been a producer in, I don't remember. But then just before leaving, they said, all right, well, they want to come and test you for the show. I, it got pretty serious pretty quick. Jeez. It did. Yeah. It did. Um, and I didn't even know what I'd only tested once before. And I felt like it was a terrible test. It was for a soap so on the East Coast. It's just oh, so man, I had no idea. I, yeah. had, I didn't know what I was going in for. And I went into the room and there were 13 suits in there. 13 suits and dresses is what I call them because it was mm -hmm. men and women. Everybody was really kind. They were just sitting very pleasant in their seats. Was it Paramount? Uh, yeah, at Paramount. Paramount. Yeah. Judging, at Param judging you. Yeah, well, a little bit, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. <laughs> um, Rick and Brandon were they walked me to the this is the first time you've met them really then. first time but i've met rick and brandon certainly you're, you're conscious of anyway yeah they weren't yeah yeah i mean and if they were in the room i didn't you know you, you know, can't you focus know. on hey who is who right. is the who is the decision maker yeah, no right. yeah so i just go in and or as we're walking for me to go do the test rick says you see you're the only one we're bringing right he did didn't he <laughs> look 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 that, oh that was just oh, before you tested this is as we're walking to the test the test you see, you're the only one we're bringing, right? Don't f this up. Pile it on. <laughs> they said that. No, Rick yeah. said that, not they. Oh, oh, Rick. Rick. Yeah. He was like, you see, you're the only one we're bringing, right? Yeah. Don't f this up. Yeah. Never looked at me. How about just, that? He's on, <laughs> Rick is on my left. Brandon is on my right. Yeah. And we're just walking. And I was like, I looked at Brandon and he, he just Smirked. like, he yeah. did. And he yeah. was like, and I said. Man, they were seasoned. Well, <laughs> and yeah. I said, well, I'll do what I do, Rick. That's all I can do. Yeah, good on And you. I left it there. And yeah. and I knew what the weight of what he was saying meant because I knew what Star Trek was. I didn't, of course, I didn't know exactly how my life would change, but I knew, mm -hmm. I knew from listening to other people over the years, Star Trek changes people's lives mm -hmm. in whatever way they wanted to change, it changes your life. So I went... Yeah. All right. And my agent, it didn't help that they told me, well, they've already seen 50 people for this role. So they're really looking for this guy. All right. All right. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I can only do what it is that I do. And then, of course, you you sign for seven, seven years. Seven years. Before you can even walk into the room. Yep. Yeah. Before you can even go in the door. And I yeah. said, wait, so if I get this, I'm locked in? Well, yeah, because they plan on doing movies with your show. Yeah. And because they didn't do movies with Deep Space Nine and they didn't do any movies for Voyager. So they've already talked about you guys doing seven years and you doing movies. And, and they everything. knew they had Scott at the helm. So, and I was like, you know, they, oh. they had a, a bona fide star that they absolutely could get behind. Yeah, um, it's a big moment when you sign that contract and then maybe, go in the room. Yeah, you, all, but you don't yeah. know. No. So if you walk in with all of that and you truly like let that hit you, it's going to throw you. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I had an out of body experience. <laughs> I literally, I've got a bottle of Evian water that's something, that's some plasma coils they've sent me wrong in the scene. And uh, I literally wafted out of my body. I'm up on the ceiling looking back down at myself holding a bottle of Evian water, pretending it was plasma coils. And I'm like... <laughs> Back in here now. Yes. Back in here. Yes. Come on. Come on. Bring it together. Bring it together. Yeah. Um, I actually messed up when I was in the room. Uh, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men, right? Yeah, exactly. So I go in and I, the scene is going well. And then I go up on a line. Do you have a script in your hand or do you know script? Do you remember? Were you, were you a script in the hand guy? Even well, if you I, was knew a, it? I was because I was told that if you yeah. put your script down, then they are going to assume yes, that, this this, is it. that this is the best performance yeah. we'll get out of this right. person. Yeah. So the moment that, yeah, so uh, and it was well. a casting director that told me that, yeah. and I always remembered that. So even if I know the words cold, I still hold it in my hand. Right. Yeah. But 
sometimes you get married to that. And yeah. so I went, all right, well, I know what this is. I just stopped. I grounded myself. I reconnected with Ron. We finished the scene. I got up and said thank you to everybody right. and left. And how soon? Yeah, how soon after that? Le- did my, you know? I was at Metropolitan, yes, which were. is which was on Wilshire, yeah. and I left Paramount less than 10 minutes. No kidding. Literally. I was, and I didn't think anything. And, you know, have you guys. I waited a week. No, no, wait. <laughs> but listen, listen. Are you kidding me? You're, I would have waited a, I would have waited months if I could have been Trip Tucker. Well, here's well, the thing. Well, we didn't know what we were playing. Of course, but I still, no, man, it was, it was worth the wait, damn it. But yes. John, yes, it was John worth Billings the wait. and I went together. I think we were the first two cast, and we walked out of those two, those, those, those auditions. And Rick and Brandon talking of the smirk. <laughs> They went, they came out of the room, they went past us and we were both sitting on the sofa still and they kind of, they just sort of breezed past us and went sort of a nod. And I finally said to Ron, I said, for crying out loud, Ron, did we get it or what? And he goes, well, you didn't hear it from me, but mm, thumbs up. (laughs) Anyway, uh, John and I go off to get a coffee together to celebrate. Um, And... uh, I was on the phone telling everybody, I mean, literally everybody. And I get a call waiting and it's Ron Surma. Hey, Dominic, it's Ron Surma here. <laughs> Listen, you haven't told anyone, have you? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 of course not. No, no, of course not. Nobody. You no? said don't tell you anyone. You said don't tell anybody, Why? so I'm, I'm keeping what? it to myself. He goes, Listen, it's just not official until uh, um, business affairs call it through. And I was like, what does that mean? He said, well, business affairs have to just ratify the call. On track. And then it's official. And yep. I'm like, okay. Right. And anyway, that was a Monday. They get a week with this contract. And then it's dead. And I sh- By Wednesday afternoon, there's now a discernible sort of passageway from my bed to the front door of my, <laughs> my apartment in Beachwood Canyon. There's a little trough where I'm literally like Just a caged animal. You can't help yourself. Yeah. Back and forth. Like, I'm going to get this damn roll. <laughs> and I'm like, they by Thursday, they've got to do this by Thursday. It must be done by th- Thursday no, afternoon. Sir. Came and went. Friday, it, it all was like Friday afternoon, I just walked out that door. And uh, I came home to 27 answer phone messages on one of those old machines. And uh, yeah, by about 6.30, we'd signed off on the, the, the mugs, dolls, and sorry, uh, action figures. Uh, uh. <laughs> Anywho, but you got 10 minutes I after the audition. Literally, if it if it took 10 minutes, I was sitting, and I know you guys have probably been with people, I'm sure, in my earlier years, I walk out of an audition, yeah, I killed that one. That felt yeah. great. Oh, geez. That felt great. Yeah, those are I, the ones you don't get. Yeah, exactly. I didn't, <laughs> and so I didn't do that. Exactly, because uh, every time I say, oh, that felt great, I never get it. Uh, so I didn't do it th- anymore. And with that one, I was just reading a low-budget feature script, and my manager, at, I mean, my agent at the time, Karen Foreman, said, um, hold on, I need to take this call. And she said, Karen Foreman, and they were saying something, and I'm just reading this script. And she said, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You're calling to do a pickup for Anthony Montgomery, who booked the role of Travis Mayweather. I'm the best. And I threw that script in the air and yeah. screamed like a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. I did. God bless. Yeah. And they didn't want me, and I had to wait longer than a week. <laughs> Well, it was a big part. I mean, yours They was, needed to make sure. Yeah. Well, you know, when I was yeah, told at the test, after the test... And Val that, Kilmer was on the line, so... Yeah. Come on, <laughs> come on, it's you or Val, man. Yeah, I've got, uh, we know. got to weigh this. Yeah. It was Val for They'd TV. They'd asked Val if he'd lose a few pounds, and, and he it, said no. He was like, no, of course not. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, when I got out of it, I was told only that... You didn't show enough awe in, in one right. of the st- scenes. And I said, can I go back in? They said, they don't want to see you. And no. I was like, They've tell seen them Travis your- has enough awe for all of you. Are you kidding me? I, I, said, was, I, was, I was guffaw all over the, all over the place. You. That was the shuttle pod scene, wasn't it? As you're going around looking yeah, at the, when the underbelly into, of the ship. We bump into the ship. How all struck should be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, when uh, we were walking toward our table read, I was walking with you that day. Mm-hmm. And I remember um, somebody walked by and they'd, recognized you from popular and i was like what the <laughs> hell <laughs> wow okay you know, I, already. I, I had i'd had nothing like that was that going to the commissary <laughs> no it was on our way <laughs> no to the table read to, to the, the table read to our well, actual yeah. first table read yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 do you remember that day that was a lovely day wasn't it that, read? that was just us getting together for that very first time there is nothing like 
no. that energy of knowing you're about to build something. And I've only had that, obviously, on that show. Yeah, like that. But just, right. you know, I, I don't know how many, I've never been a series regular on anything else. I've so. had one experience on that Desmond's uh, sitcom I did in England before right. coming over. And and I tell you, and it, the experience of that and knowing that cast and that table read, going into ours and then looking around our faces, it was like, I was like, you know what? This is a good chemistry here because mm. it only takes one idiot. That's it. Right. And we, no. did, and we, we didn't and have it any. Wasn't a we didn't have idiot. any. No. no. I mean, you know, John Billingsley squawking. We might have thought, <laughs> that guy might be the idiot in the room. <laughs> he squawked. He did squawk. But he's so brilliant. You're yeah. like, holy yeah. he made that work. I know. He, he owned the how bird. The, how the <laughs> hell did he make that work? He's a good. He's very good. I, I was looking at it just now. He's He's terrific. And to think... You know, I mean, he only came in a couple of days, maybe one or two days a week. Uh, Stole he, the show. He, he's, he's, he's Literally. In, he's in that show. That's every sure. every yeah. time you yeah. see him, he is there. It's yeah. so present. It's so one. It was wonderful. Yeah. It yeah. was lovely. He was our inaugural guest, as you uh, probably are aware. Love that. Uh, yes. It was lovely to have him on. Uh, what else should we talk about? Have we got any other We've stuff from some... America? Yeah, I have a, a general uh, trivia question for all of you. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is from Instagram. Uh, how long does it usually take to get to know the character you're about to become? Hmm. Do... <laughs> Four years. <laughs> 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 we were still learning. Go ahead. What's the and, rest of it? And do some take longer than others? So, For me, honestly, I felt like I was still learning Travis up until the fourth season. Wow. Well. I was nervous. I wasn't just nervous, I was scared because there were big shoes that we were all stepping into. Mm. And I knew that. And there were even bigger shoes that I, as the next black person on the show, was stepping into and I knew that. Yeah, that must have been an added so pressure. I mean, there yeah. was absolutely a pressure that I never yeah. talked to anybody about. And I just had the smile on my face and said, go in and give it everything you have just do what it is that you do and, and the pray pressure, that it works. Uh, just in the geography of that bridge set, which was, you know, you're front and center. Yes. <laughs> you yeah. know, yes. Uh, yeah, I was to the side. <laughs> it was um, um it, it was it was interesting. It took it took me a long time. I was never comfortable during the first few seasons. During the third season, I wasn't there very much. Um, but definitely during those first couple talking about. Do you remember about, that that young man sitting there? I, I do. Mean, yeah, I do. do. And yeah, as yeah. I was looking at him, I remember the fear and the apprehension of, okay, are you doing this right? Mm. Are you doing this right? And who's to say what's right or wrong? And I went, well, shit, there are millions of fans out there who will say what's right or wrong. Right. Just do what it is that, you feel is right for you for him and hopefully it translates mm. there were some things that i saw and i go there wasn't a ah. lot of there was i know yeah like well likewise you know yeah. that that thing you go ah okay uh, anthony yeah. you could have made a different choice or don't yeah. do that again <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you and and, I, and part of me wishes i had watched it during the time because maybe i would have changed something up then but I hear that too, and I chose not to look at it at the time because I, did, I didn't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm a terrible critic of myself, and I didn't feel comfortable that I, I it might freeze me up. And but then I, I and then all of a sudden I'm in the next scene thinking about the thing that I don't want yeah. to do yes. instead of just it's living being instead, of being, instead of just being present yeah. in the moment. And, and also, there's me. something <laughs> interesting that uh, you only time will do this for you that you again you were talking earlier about how you know you're looking at yourself in those first few episodes or first couple of years and you're like too much yes right? that's how yeah. you feel that's and, how and, i and, feel and then yes. eventually something happens it kind of goes mm. and i think that happened for me in season four right i didn't i haven't gotten through i'm only into i'm up to like episode six or right. something six or seven it's worth right watching, now i tell you I'm and, and really, i am I'm, I'm actually enjoying it there are some I things i go wait it. this is actually a fun sci-fi show i'm genuinely All loving right. it i'm uh, just trying to not anytime i come on screen i try to take myself out of it and just be yeah. a fan yeah. i just try to watch me too now. and sometimes and it's hard sometimes i go oh f anthony why did you do that yeah and then i go well it doesn't f matter why you did it because yeah. it's there yeah. it's yeah. in infamy now let yeah. it go let whatever it, go. it is let yeah. it go like yeah. the bug i saw the uh, strange new world 
Right. Mm-hmm. The, you and I, with the whole bug in the thing. In the, yeah. in the tent. My reaction was way too big. Yeah. Because I was told, I asked the visual effects people, hey, how big is this bug going to be that you're I putting in this. there? I remember this. I remember this. I asked them because I said, it's my character has been born in space. He's been to alien worlds before. So if it's a small something that just looks like a cricket, mm. he's not going to have the same response if it looks like an, you know, a ferocious Did attacking. Did they have big plans for the bug originally? How about the bug was supposed, I was told it was going to be like six to 12 inches. I said, pull the bug. That's a, that's a nice size. That's a, and I was like, okay. That's works. a creature. That's a creature. We're, re- we're reacting. And then I reaction. see it. The damn thing is like two inches it's long. And I was like, are uh, you kidding me? You left me out to dry. Yeah. Really, guys? <laughs> so I watched it. And I had a, there was a point where I, I kind of got mad. And then I just was like, it uh, doesn't matter, man. What, look, get mad about what? That's Whatever. The toughest it's acting there. there is, frankly. <laughs> acting in a in a in a vacuum to a green screen and you know of something that yeah, it's, <laughs> the, it's the toughest. Act, I think it's the toughest acting there is. Yeah, I, I agree. mean, doing a two handed play in space in a shuttle pod. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, frankly. Honestly, because right. it was yeah. just the two of you. I, yeah. yeah, I saw that. But that's... you asked me to look off at that cross over there and pretend that that's a bug or something. Yeah, and, yeah. The or, and the camera's right here, like six <laughs> inches from your face. Yes. Or you're meant to be having a conversation with another alien, and all you have is Jan back there with the yes. black felt with yeah. like an orange yeah. X on it. And you're you like, who, who am I talking I to? I tell you, I'm, I new respect for Scott because he did most of his acting, a lot of a lot of his scenes. On to the bridge, just especially, that. yeah. Wow. And he does it so well. He's Masterfully. so consistent. Masterfully. He's so consistent. Yes. Uh, he was a master, and that comes with a lot of experience, man. He'd, I have a question. Oh, yeah? Yes. I don't know if this will ever be asked, so I'm going to ask. Mm-hmm. Um, did you any of you three have a problem letting go of your character once the show ended for oh, you? Oh, no. <laughs> My character was fun. No, that dude was gone. Or, was like, or like, you know, because you, you you're living in it for a while. So did, did, you, did it, was it weird to not, to live with it still? I would imagine you do in a way. Uh, but not be able to be on set. I think the answer for me is no. I mean, look, we're actors. We lose our job all the time. And we'd if lost, lucky, yeah. we'd lost yeah. our jobs prior to getting Enterprise. We had just this amazing luxury of exploring these characters That's right. for four years. But to let them go uh, was, it wasn't so sad to let Trip go. Well, because he died. Uh, oh, other, that's true. That, that was just, well, that's, but that that's, was just in that episode. That's a luxury. You were, you were coming no, nobody, back nobody, in the nobody, very next episode. Nobody really man. dies in science nobody, fiction. Nobody. You were coming you, back. You're going to find it back in the shower going, what a dream I had. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you when you woke up. Commander. Yes. Sir Commander, <laughs> is there something you wanted <laughs> to say me. to me? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sticky. That made me crack him. I was like, oh, dumb. That's so dumb right Nailed now. it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciated having played those him more. Those were good scenes, those two. I would say. Um. Yeah, and uh, oh, Porthos is drunk. Also dead. <laughs> I just saw. I just saw the dog bollocks. <laughs> he he had a problem letting it go. For those was, of you listening, <laughs> yeah. it was. Um, uh, I know what you're. I know what you're asking, Erica, because sometimes there are characters that you play that get in your subconscious more. But those for me are the darker characters. Mm. Yeah, I those. I have to actually go do something to get myself. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know you can't hear me. Um, mm-hmm. I have to go do something to get myself out of it. Yeah. This was a fun character. And by the honestly, by the time the show ended, we already knew we were going to be leaving. Oh, that's so true, I had sure. already started to let him leave my system anyway. Yeah. Right, right. That's you know, they hell, they start they were threatening us with being canceled by like the first season, I think. If and, I no, and we and we were canceled within with like five episodes left to go or something. So yeah, we? by was, then it was like, uh, okay, well, we're on to months, the next job. Yeah. 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 There was one part. Um, I, I, Malcolm, I, yes, I mean, ditto Same. similarly. There was one part I did a play for six to nine months in London back when I started that was, as you say, an intense, dark role. And that, I remember, he, that, that character stayed with me a long time. Mm. And uh, yeah, those dark characters do sink in. Those are the ones that stay, mm-hmm. that stay the longest, which is why I don't really like to do the dark ones. <laughs> You um, have your book to worry about. Well, no, no, no. I'm, no, I'm an actor first and foremost. This book is, the, you know, mother necessity. This came yeah. out of because I needed to. But I love performing. But 
my and I'm only bringing this up because my agent and I just got into a whole conversation. They told me about a role in a horror movie and my character was getting his throat slit and all, and I said, so what is the purpose of this? Because I'm at that point in my career, I'm not doing things just to say, hey, look at me, I can act. Because I can act. I've been doing this for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I've put in my 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. I've that's That doesn't mean that I can't keep growing, but if you're gonna give me a horror project, it has to be something like that I know is going to live in my system. So it has to be something worth it. Me coming on for three lines on one page and then you don't see me again for another 45 minutes and then my character gets his throat slit. Yeah, I no, I don't want I, I don't that. want that in my subconscious. <laughs> right. So I literally just said no. I'm not going to do that one and well, but I think uh Orlando Bloom was attached to it right. and and I said, "Oh, I love his work, but that doesn't matter because the project has nothing to do with me and I don't want that in my subconscious." To your point, Erica, I didn't want to have to let that go for something that I wasn't even invested in. Mm, right. That's mm. the thing. Like, I will do it if there is a reason for me to. And for me to do something dark, there has to be a reason. There's too much darkness in the world. Nice. I don't need to add to that. Mm. So I'm I'm a different breed. What, what about health insurance? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Are you okay, Tiff, for that? I'm, I'm good. What's your favorite color? Blue. <laughs> so is mine. Mine's wait, blue. No, green. <laughs> That's a little Monty Python reference. Uh, um, I'm also blue. We're all blues. Yeah, yeah blues. Are really? Come on, yeah. Come on. blue is the right one. What we're going to do now is not do another question. We want to hear some of Anthony's music. <laughs> oh. oh, perfect. Yes, we've yeah. we did not touch so, on uh, on AT uh, the rap dude. So hey, hip hop fans out there that are in the Trek world, I don't know if you guys knew, but I released an album in 2007. And I got inspired to do it. Like, I've always loved music. And I got inspired to do it when we got on Enterprise because I wanted to open up the Star Trek franchise to a different fan base. At least that's what I thought. I wrote a song specifically about our show called What You Know About. And I took it to Paramount Legal, recorded it, <clears throat> Got it mixed, mastered, song was done, ready to go. I took it to Paramount Legal and they told me that I could not do it because I was going to do an album that was from Travis's perspective. Right. That was the whole point of it. And market yeah. it that way. And market it that, that way. But they owned <clears throat> Travis. And they yeah. said- and, and they were arsy about this stuff back then. They said they no. And I said, well, and it's not disrespectful. I don't have, I have two curse words on my entire album. I say, damn on one. <laughs> and like, yeah, like literally there was no like, profanity on it. Baptist curse words. Yeah. yeah. Like the word, the word, the curse words you can use on TV. I, there's more stuff in the Bible than I had in mind. Right. And so, and I said, you know, I'm going to uplift Gene's vision of mm -hmm. the franchise i'm just doing it in a hip-hop way so that the fans will get a chance mm -hmm. to you know do something different they said no and i said well then i'll just do the exact same thing and then i took all of your names out because <laughs> i wrote the entire thing like i talk about commander tucker i talk about malcolm reed and then i just took everybody's names out and did the in exact same song and when you hear what you're about to hear you will understand that it is literally based on our show dj right. if you please all right yeah what you think what you think what you know about yo what you know about trek the universe yeah. gazing at the star charts till it's rehearsed warp drive online got ill speed the energy crystals got what you need night's not so bright when you surpass light no seat belt so you better hold tight what you know about the warrior race oversized brood mom with the screw face rude boy screaming tinking he's superior over mankind is he crazy bruh get him home no delay man need the journey leave him on his feet never on a gurney what you know about alien getting chased genetical enhancement no mutant case what you know about a mission trying to stop my crew try as hard as you want god we coming through you you Word. They have no idea. <laughs> yeah. They have no idea. I would have destroyed well that. Done. That's awesome. I would have destroyed that. Do you have a like, music video? 
Uh, no, we didn't do a video for oh, that one. But you could. Because they didn't want me to. <laughs> they didn't want, and I said, all right, guys. They'd eat it up now, man. Oh, God. Yes. They would eat oh. that in spades, right? I believe so. Did I they, so. Uh, did you do it on the boat? No, the song that I did on the boat, what is it called? Stimulation. And that one was on the show I did called Single Ladies. Mm -hmm. In 2011, I did a track that they, I got, that was my first placement. It got placed on Single Ladies and I did a video for that. I read that in the bio just uh, yesterday. That was my first placement. How about uh, that? And the video was on VH1.com and it did really well. Do you it, come up with a melody too, or is this no, 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 no? I work with a team of people. I've got a bunch of producers that I trust, who mm -hmm. I know I feel safe with. Whenever right. I go in to do music, uh, Dakari, my man Mike Smith, I um, uh, uh, can't think of the rest of them. Fly Styles is a lyricist who I help, who I have helped me carve my lyrics. Jay Naughty. So you'll put the first yeah. bit down on paper and then... I put it down right. on paper and right. then I go in with a team of people I trust and say, okay, this is the song we're going to do. You guys help me make this a hit. All right. And I'm smart enough to hire people to do the things that I can't. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Good for you. That's, honestly, right. that sounds great, man. And uh, yeah, you're a talented man. I you oh, I very much you, so. Man. I mean, you know, with, with the little time we have left, I, I also want to say that, uh, you know, with the exception of Scott Bakula, you are the only member of our cast to be nominated oh, yes. for an Emmy. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hello. I always, I kind of forget that sometimes. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah. Emmy nominee, Anthony Montgomery, for the rest of my life. That's right. Yeah. It Now, truth be told to all the fans, it's not opened up one extra door. Shit is real. It hasn't. So I'm not, I'm going to be honest <laughs> about it. It's an honor to have been nominated, but it's never gotten me a job. Mm. Not one. Right. So- this was for General Hospital. For General it? Hospital. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice to know that for me, and you guys will hear that story. I have a chapter called Just in General in the book. Right. And when you get the book, the chapter is called... Oh, wait a minute. I get it. <laughs> Just in General. <laughs> Hi. I figured you would. Um, it is... I talk about that experience and you know it's a blessing i did not know that i could even do soaps because i don't know how to be sexy i don't know how to swoon and come on no no I, i've had uh, a lot of sex that's not the same as knowing how to be sexy like i can testify I, that training, not, that, not not that, that he was not that he was there not that he was there you I say the i had the trailer next door next door yeah i am um, my mom's listening to this I by was, the way i just want to say that my mother's listening to this so be mine careful. might be too i love I love you guys. I miss you. Uh, I love you guys. Yeah, and, I, and I thank you for this. I'm so proud of you. Uh, bless you man. Congratulations. Coming, baby. Shuttle Pod Show is going to keep soaring. This is the beginning oh, of a you, beautiful and, journey and for you guys. Thank you so much. And bless Truly. you for coming on, man. Always. Yeah. Really Always. I love you guys. Really You're a brother. You Always. Really are. Love Always. you, mate. Mm. Well, thank you, fans. I yeah. appreciate you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Anthony Montgomery. Yes. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I love you guys, and I thank you.